This is Cameron here from exoid.com. I'm uh, building today a new home server. Um, my last revision of a home server, well, if you've read my reviews, you've seen my Windows home server review that I attempted to build, and that didn't work out for me. Um, so basically, I'm, I'm building another system from the ground up. Um, got this nice Antec SLK 3000 case which I actually found next to the dumpster by my house and it's in great condition. Um, anyways, uh, inside you'll see we've got a Seasonic power supply. Um, Seasonic's known for being super efficient and very quiet. Um, this power supply is basically inaudible. Uh, we've got an AMD 690G motherboard and we've got a Athlon X2 4000 chip inside there which I'll be undervolting. We'll show a little bit more on that. Got two silent fans uh, set at 5 volts. Um, so this machine's basically completely completely silent. Uh, new in this build of the home server is as you can see here we've got a 8 gigabyte flash drive compact flash and uh, as you can see it's in an adapter hooked into the hard drive port on the motherboard and we've installed Windows Server 2003 on that and I'm actually very impressed with the speed it's a transcend 266 times card and uh, I'll take some video of how quick it is to boot in a minute here okay so here we are building our home server and I was going to show you the uh, boot speed of this compact flash adapter that we have going in there, 8 gigabyte transcend compact flash. Uh, as you can see it's turned off, although it's hard to know when it's on because it's so quiet. Uh, I'm going to push the button in about 3 seconds and you can see how quickly it boots. 3, 2, 1. Monitor flips on. and we're in. It's pretty quick. Okay, now I want to show you some real crazy power consumption numbers. Um, this machine running stock, you can see it's pulling 51, 52 watts from the wall idling. Now, what I'm going to do here is use uh, Orthos to ramp up the CPU to stress the system we'll watch and see how the watts increase that brings us up to about 81 with the CPU going full speed so 81 at full load and then about 52 at idle I'm going to show you this program it's called RM clock and what I've done here is utilized this Athlon X2 4000 and I have undervolted it. Stock voltage is 1.3 um, what I've done is I've done the idle voltage at the lowest multiplier to 0.9 um, and the highest clock speed is at 1.00 volts so it's reducing it by quite a good measure um, I've tested this through trial and error to figure out you know the best well basically the voltage that will let the processor run without issues. So I'm going to enable this, enable these uh, voltage settings, and instantly we'll see that the idle watts that this computer is pulling from the wall is 34. So instant reduction in, you know, a lot of power, especially over the life of the computer. Now, I'm going to start this up again. And one thing I want to mention is by undervolting, that's not the same thing as underclocking. Undervolting just gives the processor less voltage, but it still performs the same amount of work. So 
So now we see full load, 56, before it was at 81. You know, so we're getting about 30 watts all the time. Better power consumption and not sacrificing anything. So, pretty powerful uh, numbers there. When you can go without compromising anything to only taking 34 watts from the wall. And as you can see, this is a pretty powerful system, a dual core processor, two gigabytes of RAM. Um, another little trick I've done is anything that I'm not using in the BIOS has been disabled. Um, so any uh, floppy disk controllers and uh, parallel port controllers are all disabled, so hopefully that should use a little bit less energy. So that's us continuing on our home server build. Uh, we'll pop in the RAID card and the drives once they show up, so here we go. So as you can see right here we've got our Adaptec 2810SA RAID card. It's an 8 port card. And I'm starting to build my array of 1 terabyte Western Digital Green Power drives. Um, I already had two and I just got the other three. And uh, before I build them into the RAID array, I want to enable a feature called TLER, uh, Time Limited Error Recovery. Um, it's disabled by default. By adding this in, it will make these drives not fall out of the RAID array. Because right now, uh, these are not the RAID drives from Western Digital. They're just the standard desktop drives, which don't have the TLER enabled. So we'll go enable those by ourselves and we'll show you how that looks. So as you can see, I've got one of my new drives sitting here, I'm plugged into the machine. I'm booting off this thumb drive just so I can get into DOS mode. We'll let that boot up here. Okay, we're going to use the Western Digital TLER utility. And if we do the TLER scan, we'll see that TLER is disabled on this box. We'll do the command TLER on. And now we see the read and write TLER time is 7 seconds. That will wait an additional 7 seconds before it tries to do its error recovery. So that way it won't drop out of the RAID if it doesn't recover quick enough. So that's the last of my five drives that I've enabled this on, and let's get it in the ray and put it in the box.